Good to see you guys. So if you will, let's just stand to our feet. We're going to get into worship. And uh, I just wanted to um, just wanted to kind of say a, just a couple things. Don't worry, I'm not going to preach. I'm leaving that to Otis. <laughs> uh, but uh, I just want you all to know that um, I, I, I would never think or think of myself as any kind of replacement. Guys, I'm just here for the glory of God. I'm here for the presence of God. Um, and that's what I really want us to focus on today is just, and every Sunday, just the presence of God. That's that I'm hungry for it. I thirst for it. And if anything has taught me during this COVID is that I, I, I cannot live without it. Um, I cannot go on without the presence of God. It is, it is vital to my, to my survival, to my sanity, you know, to, to my strength. Uh, so uh, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Um, guys, you know, when we go throughout our week, I've said this before, but when we go throughout our week, um, we just, we tack on a lot of stuff that, you know, it, sometimes it's, it's our own fault, but most of the time it's just stuff that we deal with because we're in a fallen world. Um, and so it's important for us when we come in to, to really just strip off every weight, as Paul said, you know, strip off every weight that, that, would, that would hold us back. Um, you know, and, and so let's just take that a few minutes here and let's just really uh, get our focus uh, on God, get our focus on his presence, get our eyes uh, and ears in tune to his voice. Uh, so, God, we just come before you, Lord. God, we lift you up today, Father. God, we just desire your presence today, Lord. God, we just want you today, Lord. Just come, Lord, and dwell in every part of us today, Father. Lord, we, we have our songs prepared. We have our sermon prepared, God. Lord, we have our agenda, but Lord, we give you full reign. God, we give your spirit full leading. We yield to you, God. And Lord, we come, Lord, we lay our burdens at your feet. We lay our problems, our issues, God, our faults and our stresses, God, our circumstances, we lay it all at your feet, God, and we look up. You know, God, I just saw a, a vision of, a, not a vision, but I just saw, had a picture of us setting things down, and then we turn our eyes up. You know, we look, so, so that our focus is not on those things anymore. Our focus is on God and his glory and his presence. So, God, today we just, we just cast down all of our things before your feet, and we look up to you, God. We look up to you, God. Lord, you are the lifter of our heads today, God. Lord, we worship you today. We worship you today. God, we lift you up today. God, we praise your name. We praise your name. We praise your name. Only one is found worthy. our eyes. 
Lord, open our ears, Lord, to see and hear you, God. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. And if 
God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, oh, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Sing that again. Oh, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Our God. Our God. Our God is for us. Then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? lift you up today. Father, you're worthy, Lord. God, you are a mighty warrior in battle, Lord. God, we praise your name, the Lion of Judah. Lord, we lift you up, God. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are strong. Lord, you are strong, Lord. You are mighty. God, you are our healer, Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, the Conqueror, Lord. Jesus, we praise your name. We praise your name, Lord. Jesus, we praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome and power. Our God. Our God. You know that that verse it says that we are more than conquerors through Christ you know the interesting thing you know what could be more than a conqueror what could be greater than a conqueror how are we more than conquerors well, you know if you're more than a conqueror then that means that the enemy has absolutely no chance no chance and you know Christ said I have fear not you know uh, I have overcome the world guys the victory is in Christ Guys, the victory is in Christ. He has overcome. That's what makes us more than conquerors. The enemy has no chance. Jesus, we praise you. We praise you. I want, uh, so like this next song, uh, I'm not trying to stall or anything, but, um, and you guys, I'm going to I'm going to play you guys can uh you know worship the Lord in your tithes and offerings. But I want y'all to know as I was preparing as I got these songs that over the last 2 weeks I've really been praying a lot about these songs. And I only had these two songs in my heart. But this next song, you know, I just well, you know, our God is greater and then um this next song, yes and amen. I've just really felt like this church needs to, um, it's kind of like our declaration. You know, when you go through things, you know, we constantly, and I, like, look guys, I'm, I'm talking to myself, okay? I'm talking to myself. But when we go through things, it's easy to get weighed down by what we go through. And then we just, we kind of neglect, we neglect that time, that time with God. You know, um, if there's one thing, you know, I told, I talked about COVID a few minutes ago. There's one thing I learned in COVID is like that personal time, that secret time with God is vital. It is vital. Um, and, and it really was eye opening to me uh, because I'm, I'm just being honest with y'all. It's, you know, I'm glad that we can do the online stuff, the streaming, but it's not the same to me. It's not the same. You know, I praise God for it. I'm thankful for it, you know, but I need that. I need that presence. I need that, that corporate presence, you know, that corporate gathering. 
But as we sing this song, I just really felt like God was laying on my heart that this is kind of like a like a, a, de- a declaration, you know, a declaration. You know, there's a verse that says that we should call forth in existence those things that aren't as though they are. You know, and, and so like sometimes when we try to when we say that God is faithful, you know, we don't necessarily see that around us. We don't see God's faithfulness working all the time. But that's where it's most important for us to declare that, you know. I, you know, I've, I've said things in the past, like I've, I've saying things in the past, and honestly, like I was really calling forth that into existence into my heart, that belief, that faith, you know, that God is faithful. If I'm going through something, <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but not all the time I feel like God is faithful. But that doesn't mean that he's not faithful. It just means that I don't believe it. There's something in my heart that needs to change.
we declare today you are faithful through every circumstance every problem we face you're faithful you're faithful Praise you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we come into your presence. Lord, your promises are yes and amen. And we believe. And we ask, Lord, for the Holy Spirit to move and minister as you desire to do in our hearts and in our lives and our homes. God, we cry out to you today. We cry out for those that are sick this morning. We pray for Esther that you'd minister to her. Touch her body. Bring healing, Lord, in her today. Lord, for Susan and all of their family and the loss of their sister, I pray, God, that You would minister to them and undergird them and hold them in Your hand and strengthen them, I pray, in this hour. Lord, we pray for Shannon today. Lord, we come against this cancer in the name of Jesus and we pray healing 
to flow in her body. And God, I pray that you administer to every member of her family. May they sense you and your presence and your might and your power. Oh God, for Diane, that you would touch and move and minister. And Lord, we're believing you today, not just for these that we cry out their name, but Lord, we cry out for all of those that are not feeling well. For Johnny's father, that you'd minister and touch. God, I'm believing you to move and might and empower. And I thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, we come into your presence today. Lord, we cry out for our nation. For this election that's coming up on Tuesday. God, we cry out for your will to be accomplished. We cry out for the forces of darkness to be bound. And that you would shine forth in might and in power. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, flow and move and minister in this hour. We thank you for what you're going to do. And Lord, we stand here today and we believe that your promises are yes and amen. And that's why we declare this morning, Jesus! Amen. We agree with you, O oh Lord. We cry out your heart. We cry out your will. And we thank you for what you're going to do. For the way you're going to minister. We give you praise and glory and honor. For everything in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray and we believe. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're not through. You're not finished. You're just starting. You who began this good work in us is more than able to bring it to completion. We just thank you for what you're going to do. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated for just a minute. I, I want to share something with you today. Thank you, sir. I hadn't planned to do this today, but I just feel in light of, of just kind of how the the service is gone that I do need to do this and share this today. I, uh, I'm a very, very private person. I live in a public light, but I'm very private about me. Over the course of the last, uh, I don't know, month, I guess. Well, let's go back probably 10 months, 11 months this month with what our family's been through, what happened to David. We've all just had kind of a heightened sense of, I don't, I don't know what you would call it, of uh, mortality, of death. Um, I went for a checkup, I don't know, it's been several weeks ago, and... Uh, because of what happened to David, they ran an EKG on me, and uh, it came back abnormal. And uh, my doctor said, look, because, and she was David's doctor as well, because of what happened to David, um, I want to I wanna send you to a cardiologist. And... Uh, So immediately, 
You start thinking the worst. You start thinking, oh God. Then I started feeling things. That's how powerful our mind is. So a couple weeks ago, I, uh, no, it was last week, I guess. Uh, went to, well, a couple weeks ago, I went to a cardiologist. They ran another EKG. It came back uh, abnormal, and he came in and talked to me, and he said, look, he said, uh, I don't know what I was going on, but you've had a heart attack at some point. Um, and we're going to do an echocardiogram just to see what the damage is and how severe it is and what our next course of action is. So I walked out of there. That day, and I, I was racking my brain trying, and I'm going, no. I know last fall, yeah, I went through a really bad time, and David was real concerned about me and had me take a little bit of back seat, and he took over some things for a while. And um, That's the only thing I could think of, uh, only thing that I could remember um, going on. And um, over the course of those next week, I think it was scheduled for this past week, uh, but over the next week, it was just like everything that could piled into me. And I just, I just became an emotional wreck, I guess is the best way to put it, of just, God, what's going on? And all uh, my family, we talked to them, and of course they were giving me the do's and don'ts and what you got to do and what's the next step. And, and I told them, I said, look, I don't know what God's doing, but I don't feel and I don't have a sense of release from responsibility of what he's called me to do in this hour. This past Tuesday, I guess it was, went back and they did the echocardiogram and um, Denisa went with me and she was in there with me while they were doing it and um, I just want to say right off the bat contrary to popular belief they found that I do have a heart um, it was there um, And the guy that was doing it got to talking to us and uh, they always asked me what I do and when I told him what I did, um, he just started talking to us. And he was talking about, well, do you have this? And I'm going, no, I've never had any issues. I've never had a problem until this EKG came back abnormal. And, uh, and then I told him about David. And he sat there and he said, Five years ago, I lost my son. He was about the same age, heart issue. We sat there and, well, I was laying down. He was sitting. And we talked and just shared about Jesus and about how if you don't have Jesus, I don't know how you get through things like this. And after he got through, he told me what to expect, and he said they're going to do a report. And the doctor told me, based on whatever happened, whatever showed up, whatever, how much damage, all that kind of stuff, what the next steps would be. So I was pins and needles. The next morning, I got a report and uh, went online read the report, called Denise up to my office and we we're just reading it. And what it said was everything looks normal. Blood flows good. Valves are working good. 
We don't see anything. And I walked out of there that day with dread, but on that Wednesday morning when we were reading that report, and of course then I'm the kind of person of going, okay, well, there's something that's, you know, they're not telling us everything. I'm good. Let me rephrase that. My heart's good. Let me rephrase that. My heart's beating right. Pumping right. Blood flow's good. Um, and I share that for this reason. God is faithful. God is faithful. I don't understand everything. I don't know why everything happens the way it happens. I, I, I've, I've come more and more to the place where I don't understand. But I trust God. I'm trusting God. And I'm believing Him. His promises are yes and amen. And I, and I, I appreciate my family. I appreciate all of my grandkids. I appreciate Collins teaching me that prayer. And I told Kristen this week, I said, I want a t-shirt that says, Jesus, Amen. Because that says it. That says it all. I'm in agreement with Him. You want to know what I believe? Jesus. You want to know who I'm following? Jesus. You want to know how my life is going to be lived? Jesus. It's all about Him. And this morning, we come together on November the 1st, 2020. This is the 979th day of the year 2020. Well, it's not that many, but it seems like it's been that many. And I think about what this day means, because you see, today is All Saints Day. All Saints Day is referred to as All Hallows Day. Hallow is a saint or those who have lived for the Lord. All Hallows Eve was yesterday. That's how the term Halloween came about. Hallows Eve. Um... Today is, is a day when we should think about and remember those that have gone before us. Now, I'm, I know some get off track and some think that there are some things that we should do or shouldn't do. And I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. But, but to remember those that have gone before us, I think, is a biblical thing that we need to do. To remember the faithfulness of those who've gone before us. Now, yesterday was also uh, uh, Reformation Day. October 31st, 1517, Martin Luther nailed 95 theses on St. Uh, Paul's Basilica on the door. And it began the Reformation movement which brought about the Protestant denominations of which we are a part of the Protestant movement. And it was a breaking away of the, the Catholic Church, of, of some of their teachings and beliefs, and believing that, that we have the right as believers to read God's Word. We have the right not to just hear it when we come together uh, in a mass setting, but that we have the right, and that's when the Bible started being printed, and those early printers of the Bible, many of them were martyred for putting the, the, the uh, uh, Word of God into English, uh, translating it into something other than Latin. Uh, they were martyred and burned at the stake. And we take for granted today so many of the... We take for granted the Bible. 
how we came about having God's Word readily accessible to us that we can read it and study it and share it together. All Saints Day was a day that you remembered those that have gone before us and crying out to God. It also became another spiritual day on yesterday, on October 31st, Halloween. Do you realize that Halloween is the second most holy day to the Satanist? The first most holy day to a Satanist is your own individual birthday. The second most uh, holy day to a Satanist is Halloween. It is a day that they pray to the devil, to the spirits to be released upon the earth. To, and they did it on October the 31st to get a jump on the church for November the 1st. But I'm just here to tell you, I don't care how big of a jump they think they got. My God is greater and greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. That's why my personal opinion, and this is personal opinion, we don't celebrate Halloween. We never have celebrated Halloween. Our kids don't celebrate Halloween. We'll celebrate um, Reformation Day or All Saints Day. or I mean, we do things with our family. But that, that's just, I'm, I'm not, that's a personal thing, and that's up between you and, and your God. When I say your God, your relationship with God. What I'm crying out for us today is that we remember that nowhere in the Bible does it tell us that we are supposed to pray to the saints. As a matter of fact, Jesus said in Matthew 6, 6, He said, but you, when you pray, go into your room, when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Jesus Himself tells us how we're supposed to pray. We have direct access to God. We can pray to our Father. We're not supposed to pray to the saints. We're not even supposed to pray through the saints. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses, verse 5. For there is only one God, one God, Mediator. You know what a mediator is? A mediator is one who goes between you and the one you're talking to. You know who our high priest is? His name is Jesus. We have one mediator. His name is Jesus. He can reconcile God and humanity. The man, Christ Jesus. That's exactly who and how we're supposed to pray. We can come boldly to the throne of grace. You don't have to go through Otis anymore. You don't, not that you ever did, but you don't have to go through a preacher or a priest or someone else to get your prayers to God. You have direct access to God. You can cry out to Him in your home, in your car, in your garden, in your yard. It doesn't matter. We have access to the Father and we can come boldly to the throne knowing that He hears our cry and knowing that He intercedes, Jesus intercedes on our behalf because He is our high priest and He knows what we're going through. He knows the weaknesses of our flesh and He cries out in our behalf. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We have direct access to God. But I do believe that we should remember those that have gone before us. Not, not for our praying to them or praying through them. But it is to remember the faithfulness of God that has already been exhibited in men and women like us. The Bible tells us that Elijah was a man just like you and I. Flesh and blood. Those three young Hebrew men who stood before Nebuchadnezzar, who would not bow a knee, 
who said our God is able to deliver us, but if He doesn't, we're still going to trust Him. And when they throw them into the fire, they don't know what's going to happen. They don't know if they're going to perish. They don't know if they're going to come out the door or meet their Lord. But they're okay because they know their Lord. The faith that we need in the hour in which we're living is a faith that says, my God is able to deliver me, but if He chooses for me to go through this, my God is able to keep me through this. It doesn't necessarily have to be that He removes me from this. He can keep me through this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The writer of Hebrews tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. I want you to, I want you to think. I want you to think this morning of people who are no longer in this world who've had an impact on your life. Maybe they were the ones that witnessed to you. Maybe they were the ones that taught you in Sunday school or in kids' church. Maybe they were the ones that was preaching when you gave your heart to Jesus. Maybe it was a pastor that mentored you or shared into your life, but they've gone on to their reward. I want you to think about that this morning. And I want you to think about those that have gone before us. I want you to think about those that have gone before us in Infusion Church. I want you to think about the pastor that started this church in 1962, Jasper Honeycutt, a faithful man of God. Those that have followed. Those people that have been faithful throughout these years for God to move and minister in might and in power. We're not the first generation or the first people of this fellowship that have ever gone through anything. People have gone through stuff. You know, John and I were talking not long ago about today. The day in which we live and the, the unrest we see across this nation. And, and I, I'm, I'm not saying anything one way or the other about that. I'm just talking about the unrest. I will say this, and I believe this is biblical and it's not my opinion. Racism is a sin. God doesn't care what color you are or what country you're born in. He died for you. That's what we as a church have to focus on. We have to focus on that Jesus came for all of us. And let me just put this to rest. That picture, and we don't have one here, that picture of Jesus that is the popular picture of Jesus blonde hair and blue eyes, I can promise you, Jesus didn't look like that picture. How do you know? Because I know where he was born. And I know his descent of where he came from. He was olive skinned at the lightest. He had dark hair. He was made in God's image just like you and I. Let me tell you something, folks. It does not matter the color of skin. What matters is, do you know Jesus? And I believe that we as a church have to lead the way in the understanding that people deserve to be treated like people. All people. Let me get back. We were talking about the unrest, and he asked me, if this was the worst I'd ever seen it. And I said, Lord, no. 
I remember living through the 60s. And those of you that were remember that, remember the this nation was on fire. College campuses were on fire. The upheaval and unrest. And it wasn't just, there was racial tension, yes, it was about civil rights, but a lot of it was also about the Vietnam War. A lot, it, there were a lot of things going on at that time. And I remember, I remember my dad pastoring a church in Newnan, Georgia. And I remember people in his church who got mad at him because of his stance about civil rights and about people or people. I remember those days. I remember some of those great men and women of faith who stood the test. Oh, I remember others. I remember some some mean old snakes, and there we can all know some mean old snakes. But that's not who I'm talking about today. I'm talking about those men and women of faith who promoted Jesus Christ and the love and the hope of Jesus Christ. I remember a lady named Miss Thompson who taught me in kids' church. I can still remember some of the stories that she told us. And Lord, I'm 64, so that had to be 50 plus years ago. I remember her breaking down the Word of God into a, into a manner that I could understand and telling me that Jesus took my place and took my sins upon Himself and suffered and died for me. I remember a man named Oscar Slayton who was in my dad's church. Wasn't when we first went there. His wife was. This man was actually lived a hobo life back in the 30s. Rode trains and different things and just... I remember people in the community talking about what kind of man he was and how horrible he was and that there was no need in wasting your time on him. And I remember my dad going over to his house and sitting on the front porch in a swing with him. And first time he went over there, they sat in the swing, and I don't think they said two words to each other. But he kept going back. And he kept going back. And he found out something that Oscar Slayton loved to do, and he started doing it with him. And slowly but surely... He lived Jesus Christ in front of that man. And I remember the day that that man gave his heart and life to Jesus Christ. And I remember him sitting in church on the second row on the aisle seat. And I remember my dad calling on him to pray. And I remember as a little boy listening to that man pray. And I love the way he prayed. Because he didn't pray using all these theological terms and all these religious words. He prayed to Jesus just like Jesus was standing there talking to him. That's the lives I remember. And many others. In my pastorate of over 42 years, God has brought us into the lives of so many people. I have books in my library that a very special man gave me. Well, his wife actually gave me after his death. Denise and I had gone to that church and we were there two and a half years. That was it, two and a half years. And God moved us. And that was the longest pastorate 
until they closed the church a few years ago. And the reason was the pastor there had been there 13 years before me, 13 years and died. And the church had a hard time with that. And those two and a half years were two and a half years of hell. That's the only way I know how to describe it. But it was a two and a half years where God taught me a whole lot about spiritual warfare. That was where I, we learned what spiritual warfare was and, and all about spiritual warfare. And there was a man there and his name was James Fritz. And I remember when he was in the hospital not long before his death, I was there in the hospital with him and I was talking to him and, and he just looked at me and, and he had been such an encourager. He would leave the service and he'd come to me and he'd say, look, I want you to know you're doing right. I want you to know you're sharing the Word of God. That's all you can do. He was such an encourager to me. And he was on his deathbed. He looked at me and he said, I don't know why God's left me here these last three years. And I told him, I do. I needed you and God used you to minister to me you see who I am today is not just based on Otis and it's not just based on what I've learned or what I I am what other people have poured into my life what other people have shared with me Oh, we always have the others. We always have those who, you know, Mr. Negative or Ms. Negative. I understand that, but you know what? You can't concentrate on that. you got to concentrate on what God's calling you to do and who God's speaking into your heart with. Brandon said something this morning about corporate worship and being able to come together with the body. And yes, I'm thankful for the live feed. And yes, I'm thankful. And I understand people who are not comfortable in coming at this moment. And I understand that. This is not an indictment against anybody. But I'm going to tell you something. The body of Christ needs one another. So even in times when we can't always be together, we need to be reaching out to one another. We need to be pouring into lives. We need to be sharing hope and love. We need to be encouraging even those that are unable to be with us because of what's going on in our world, we can't disconnect. I love, now listen, I love the way the message puts Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to read those to you. And I want you to listen to how the message puts these words do you see what this means all those pioneers who blazed the way all these (coughs) excuse me all these veterans cheering us on it means we'd better get on with it Strip down. Start running. Never quit. No extra spiritual fat. No parasitical sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how He did it. Because He never lost sight of where He was headed that exhilarating finish in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. And now He's there in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you and yourselves are flagging in your faith, go over that story again. Item by item.
that long litany of hostility he plowed through, that will shoot adrenaline in your souls. Look at what he says. He says, look, thinking about those that have gone before us, those veterans, those those who kept the faith. Even, listen to me, I know people, you know people, that have left this world in not the best of circumstances. And when I say that, I'm not talking about their relationship with God. I remember and I think about going to see people who are battling cancer and battling different things and go to visit them, to try to encourage them, and I leave more encouraged than when I went because they're up here in their relationship. Oh, yeah, their, their body and their physical is going through this, but they have a faith that's holding on to God, and they encourage you even in the midst of their trouble and in their trial. Remember those that have gone before us that remain faithful through the situation the battles, the storms. Remember them. Think about it. Because you yourself, you're going to go through battles. You're going to go through storms. There are going to be times when you want to throw up your hands. There are going to be times when you want to give up. There are going to be times when you don't even know if you know God. Press on. Remember Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. The one who went through this story before you and I started. The one who was faithful all the way to the end, even though he was done wrong, even though he was lied about, even though he was betrayed. He did right up to his last breath. The words of Jesus that ring in my mind every day are the words that he spoke when they're nailing him to the cross. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Father, forgive them. Can we forgive those who've nailed us to the cross? Can we forgive those who said all manner of evil against us? The Bible says that we're supposed to pray for them. The Bible says that we're supposed to bless them. The Bible says that we're not supposed to return evil for evil, but we're supposed to return good. So that it heaps coals of fire upon their head. And that doesn't mean that he's asking us to call fire down from heaven and burn them up. Be faithful. Here we are today, remembering those that have gone before us. Maybe it was your mother, maybe it was your father. Maybe it was your grandmother, your grandfather. But today, I'm asking you to look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Yeah, remember those. Remember everybody that's had a part in your heart, in your life, in molding and shaping you into who you are but allow Jesus to be Lord of all in each and every one of us. Father, I thank You for Your love, Your mercy, Your grace. Lord, we come into Your presence today and we ask for the Holy Spirit to move and minister upon our hearts and upon our lives. God, today we remember those that have gone before us. Those pioneers of faith who blazed the trail, who made the way, even through difficult hours. We're not the first ones to encounter difficult hours. 
God, help us. Help us to gain strength from realizing that you've been faithful before us. You're faithful now through us and you will be faithful after us. You are faithful. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes we get so centered on our own problems that we think it's just us and we're the, we're the only one going through anything and we're the only one battling something and we're the only... God, lift up our eyes. May we stop being masters of our own problems. And may we start being disciples of Jesus. Followers of Jesus. Relying upon You. Trusting You. Believing You. In everything and in every way. God, I thank You for all of those that have imparted into my heart and into my life and my walk with You. And I thank You, Lord, for what You're going to do in the coming days, weeks, months, and years. I give to You all praise and glory and honor for everything that is accomplished. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, we pray and we believe and we will receive what You have for us. We cry out today for this land, for this nation. We cry out, O oh God, for You to intervene, for You to flow, for You to move, for You to minister. Have Your way in this place, in us, and through us, I pray. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord, for Your love and mercy and grace. Tyler, if you would come. As Tyler's coming, let me remind you of this week, our Wednesday evening Bible study online. Uh, we continue that uh, heart to heart. Denise and I sharing with you our service next Sunday. Be very much in prayer for it. I want to encourage you today. Today our church has set aside. Today is a, a national day of prayer and fasting for the election that's coming up Tuesday. If you haven't voted, go vote Tuesday. Do not, not vote. Vote. Let your voice be heard. Do it based on what, what you believe and what you believe God's speaking into your heart and in your life and in your belief. So I just want to encourage you to vote. Um, and then be very much in prayer for this week and for our service next Sunday. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. All right. Tonight... You know, we meet um, youth every Sunday night at typically 6.30. Uh, we actually want to move it up. We, um, we think it might be better for everybody. That way we can spend some time together, but you also get a decent time to get home and get ready for school on Monday. Yay. I'm looking at you. So what we're going to try to do is if... You're not here, and you're listening on the live feed, or if you are here, we're going to meet at 3.30 today, so that gives you enough time to eat as much food as you want to at lunch, come here, and then hopefully we can work it off a little bit, and then get to talk about God. Yeah, 3.30 to 5 is when we're going to meet, so at 5 o'clock, you got to get out of here so you can go eat again. Um but if you know anybody that's not here and you have their phone number, please give them a call. Let them know. If you're listening on live feed, please pay attention. We love you. We appreciate you. And um, we have changed um, to a new Facebook and a new Instagram. I'll talk more about it tonight. But um, if you want to look it up on Facebook, the Facebook page is Infusion Youth 2020. I just know it's not been the best year, but hopefully this can be a great beginning to what God has for us and 
and a new thing for what we're going to move into. As far as Instagram, it's the same exact thing. It's Infusion Youth 2020. All right, last thing I want to say is I'm excited. I'm excited to be a part of this church. I'm excited to see what God's going to do. Um, there's a pastor that um, said something that has stuck with me my entire life, and I was really, really hard-headed when I was a teenager. So for anything to have stuck with me is miraculous. But he would always tell me, if you don't quit, you win. He Amen. said, God's already fought the battle. He's already finished the race. All you got to do is not give up. And so I just want to encourage everybody here today, just like you are, if you don't quit, you win. Amen. I love you guys. Amen.